嗯，晚安，大家好，嗯，我是彭君如，嗯，谢谢你们今天晚上来听我的嗯 presentation author workshop， 嗯，我现在先跟大家说对不起，因为我的国语实在是真的不够好了，所以以后呢，他现在我就我就会开始用英文来嗯。Give my presentation. Okay, so thank you again for coming to my presentation this evening.、Um, I would like to talk about、um, how to maximize the impact of your research. So if you can give me a bit of time, I just want to、um, tell you a bit more about the journal that I work for. I work for a journal called Biotechnology Journal.、Um, it is.、Um, Our editors in chief are Professor Sanyap Lee from Korea and Professor Alois Jumbauer from Austria. And、um, within the editorial office, we have we have um, three um, full-time staff. So there is myself,、um, Judy Pei, and、um, Uta Goebel, who are in the German office. And、um, And Jing Zhu,、um, Zhu Jing, who is in the Shanghai office, who many of you may have attended her presentation、um, a month ago. So, thank you again for coming.、Um, if you have any questions about my journal, you can also feel free to ask.、Um, we are proud to say that our first impact factor will be released in a few days.、Um, we're looking at about three, so、um, we are looking forward to be able to serve the biotech community even better with this great number. So here's an overview of my presentation. So I want to talk about the reasons、um, why you need to maximize the impact of your research, and、um, I want also want to explain what is the role of choosing the right journal that、um, has an impact on how you can maximize the impact of your research. And of course,、um, a very important point is impact factor. Everybody knows how important it is, and I want to explain a bit more about the impact factor and how you can、um, use this number to your advantage. I also want to briefly touch about touch on the H index.、Um, the H index is something that's coming into more and more into play in, by many funding institutions, and、um, I like you to think about this as your personal impact factor. And、um, of course, you need to know、um, to take this home with you.、Um, the steps you need to maximize your citations. So let's take a step back and look at the basis of、um, scientific research. So the basic tenet of scientific research is that you have the funders, and the funders are there to provide you with the funds. To do your research, and the researchers, as you,、um, receive these funds, carry out your research, and provide your results. And by providing your results, you are able to give the funders feedback on what you have done with that money, and how you plan to be able to get more money and carry out this important research that you're doing. So. The current research cycle,、um, of course, the basis are the same. It's the relationship between funders and you, the researchers. But there is a bit more that comes into play because the funders need to know how you have done your work and、um, what is the relevance of the work that you're doing and why you should continue to be funded or continue to be funded even more than what you have at the moment. So, what the funders have stipulated is that you need to publish. Your results in a scientific journal, and once your paper has been accepted in the scientific journal, and it has been edited by the in-house editors, this then goes out into、um, the wide world of your research community. This is where I call the discovery part.、Um, in order for your peers to see your work, they must first see, discover your work, and then in order for them to cite your work, they need to. Understand what you've written. So, and at the end of the day, the funders look at the journal that you published in, and the number of citations that you have, to give them the final results to determine whether they want to give you more funding. Now, I'm sure that all of you are aware that scientific funding is not getting any easier.
So I just want to use this slide um, to illustrate the point. These numbers are from the USA, so I don't know whether this applies to every part of the world, but I think I can safely say that um, funding is limited and um, we have to compete for the funding. So if you look at the funding trends in the United States um, going back to the 90s to current, the dotted lines that you see are the actual, the, the constant numbers, I think, taking into account inflation. So you see from this is that the current level is actually not, actually less than what we've had in 2003, which is 10 years ago. So with more people and less funding, um, the maths are quite obvious. Um, I'm sure all of you are scientists and are aware that with less funding and more people, the competition is, of course, tougher. So this is why you need to maximize the impact of your research, because obviously funding is limited. And you also need to know, as researchers, how do your funding agencies you, um, how do your funding agencies measure your performance? Now, I realize that in China, impact factor is the most important. So, of course, we're going to talk about impact factor today. And increasingly, uh, many agencies are also using the H index to determine the output of a scientific researcher. What you need to remember is, as a researcher, that these numbers are very, very important, but these numbers are also not static. And so not only do you need to know what your funders are asking for each day, but also how the, your work is being published and in which journals and whether the impact factor of these journals that you're publishing are constant or are they decreasing. So it's increasing incredibly important that not just looking at today's impact factor, but how do you think this journal will develop in the future to ensure that whenever you apply for your grants and you update your impact factor numbers, that number is always as high as possible. Having said all this, what I really want to emphasize is that the most important thing is solid research. By having the most, there's nothing that we could do for you if your research is not solid. So having the best work that you can do with the money um, and plus effective communication from your end and from our end, as in the journals, um, this is the recipe for success. So I want to just go back a bit and also talk about choosing the right journal. So we've said already the most important factor um, that a researcher needs to think about um, because of funding issues is the right impact factor, the journal having a high impact factor. But this impact factor is also affected by many other variables and these are the other part, which is probably the, the other quarter, the other 25% that you need to think about when you decide where to submit your papers to. So what are the other factors in choosing the right journal? So journal scope and reputation. So you, of, you of course, want to build a reputation within your community. So just by publishing in any journal with a high impact factor is not going to really help you when a peer of yours is looking at your grant application and thinks that they have never heard of the journals that you have published in. So recognition, by choosing the right journal, by choosing the right journal, you will ensure that you have the recognition by your peers Publication speed is another very important factor because as a scientist, you always want to be the first to publish. Um, just because you have maybe perhaps a very good paper in a very high impact factor journal, but it's not the first one to come out, not only do you have the chance, the potential of actually having your paper rejected because it's been so long in the peer review process, but also 
that you are not the first to publish. Um, so if you are competing for tight funding, you want to make sure that the journal you choose has a good publication speed. And most good, reputable journals will have this data available on their website. So have a look at the website before you submit your paper. It's also important to think about your reputation with a journal. And what I want to say is, you want to be seen as a frequent author of the journal and not a re repeated rejection. So let's look at, for example, we all know what Nature is. So Nature, um, of course, everybody wants to submit their papers to Nature or Science um, because these are, of course, the most um, well-recognized journals in many scientific disciplines. Um, the thing is, if you submit a paper to Nature every month and it gets rejected every month, and then at the end of this 12 months maybe, and you finally have a paper that is really going to be Nature worthy, and the editor looks at your paper again and goes, not another one of those. So you already have a negative um, impact on your um, negative impression that you've given to the editors. So you want to make sure that the journal you choose you are exactly, you're quite confident that your paper will get in there. Um, and therefore, you have maintained a good relationship with the editors of the journal. Another factor you may want to think about is uh, in-house editorial office. This, packs, this ties back to publication speed and quality. By having dedicated staff in the editorial office, what it means is that we are full-time people who are looking after your manuscripts. We are there to ensure your manuscript is going through every stage of the peer review process as fast as possible. We are there to remind the reviewers when their reports are overdue. We are there to remind the scientific editors when their recommendations are overdue. And we are there to ensure that once your paper is accepted, you are um, presenting the best, the, presenting your paper in the best light possible. So, Think about it when you um, try to submit your paper. Another very important factor is, of course, indexing. Indexing ensures that your paper is discovered by your peers. It ensures visibility in the right audience because, of course, indexing is not just indexing. Um, you need to ensure that the people that your field are looking at um, will be able to find your paper. And finally, the editorial board is also very important. If you recognize the names of the people on the editorial board, it is likely that they will recognize your name too. And therefore, when they are familiar with your work, perhaps when you are at a conference, um, when you have presented your work in a very positive manner, they remember that and they associate that with you. And therefore, are able to really value the work that you have done. So now let's talk about the all important impact factor. So we all know that impact factor is a very important number. But what does the impact factor actually mean? So I don't know how many of you are actually aware of the numbers that actually go into the calculations. And um, I know for sure that when I talk to my editors and when I talk to authors, when I go to um, conferences and workshops, uh, most people don't actually know how it's calculated. So here is the formula. So for an impact factor in 2012, this is calculated by the citations in 2012 to all the articles published in 2010 and 2011 divided by the number of source articles published in these years. And so it's basically, you can see it as an average citation over a defined time period. It is also um, a delay, of course. So the, pay, the impact factor for last year, which is 2012, of all the citations in 2012, does not get released until June the year after, which for us is June 19th this year, so it's a very important date um, for many journal editors. Um, it's a day that we are always looking forward to, uh, sometimes with um, sometimes happier um, and sometimes not so happy if we, we know that our journal may not be as high impact factor as we want. So 
It's a very exciting time for us in the next few days, and we will see if whether our journals are doing as well as we would like them to. But for you as a researcher, what you need to take into account is impact factor is about citations. But it's not just about citations any time to anything, but to a certain period of time. So if you're citing a paper today, in this year, you will have to make sure that it's cited in the last two years, so 2012 and 2011, in order for them to count in the impact factor calculation. So what do we know about the impact factor? It is an average number. The journal impact factor also does not equate to the impact of your paper. And the journal impact factor also does not say anything about the quantity of your publications. And here I've just got a actually a, a visual um, presentation of what I want to explain to you. So let's get the pointer out. So this is um, the actual data from Web of Science in um, Cell, which I'm sure many of you are also aware of. Um, it's a very prestigious journal in the life sciences. Um, and if you look at the x-axis, the x-axis, this is the number of citations that a paper has. And this y-axis is the number of papers with this number of citations. So you can see that most papers have less than 10 citations um, in cell, and only very few articles have more than, say, 30 citations. So even though the journal has an impact factor of 30.4 um, from last year, um, this is the latest number, you can see that most of the articles in the journal are actually um, are not as highly cited as um, the ones that are very, very well cited. So what you need to take into account is that, so what I've said already is that impact factor changes every year, and your funder requires you up to update the impact factor every year. Um, if I'm correct, um, most funding agencies want you to update the numbers in every time you apply for your grant. So what you need to be aware of is, does this journal have a stable impact factor? Or is this journal going to go down or up? It's something that you need to um, take into account when deciding where to submit your paper. And having also, um, funding bodies are starting to recognize the limitations of the impact factor because obviously it is, it is an impact factor. Um, it is a number that is an average, and it doesn't say anything about specifics of your paper. So I'm just moving forward now. So what um, a lot of funding agencies these days are starting to look at is called the H index. Um, I don't know whether it has started to pick up in China yet, um, but maybe it is something that will happen in the near future. Um, but is it something that um, if you have a high H index, it will never hurt your career? <laughs> okay, so this is um, how what an H index is. It is devised by a gentleman or a scientist. Um, actually, I think he was a physicist. And uh, his name was Jörg Hirsch, and that's why it's called H index. What the H index says is, a researcher with H index of H has H number of papers that were cited at least H number of times. So graphically speaking, this is what the H index is. So, so for each paper that you have, so this is the number of papers, the number of citations. So if you have um, a paper with lots of citations, and you have many papers with fewer citations. So in this number, when the, the, the 45 degree angle where this num the two numbers meet is your H index. So what the H index is trying to say is, it's not good enough to have lots of papers 
but low citations. So you may have lots of papers here. You may have lots of papers, but if they are not well cited, you will never have a high age index. And if you have one paper that has very high self citations, that has very high self citations, that is also not sufficient. What you need is that you need lots of papers with lots of citations to ensure that you have a good H index. So you need to make sure that all your papers are moving up this way. And so what you need um, to do, what you need to do to increase your number, your H index, of course, it's also, it is about the number of citations. You need to maximize your citations, but you also need to distribute your citations. So if one of your articles is well cited, you need to make sure the others are also becoming well cited. It is also very important um, that you publish a lot. So you need a number of papers. And um, what's the one way to get lots of papers is to have, of course, productive collaborations. Um, so I think what I'm coming to is that all these measures, what they're trying to say is, they're trying to get you, the researcher, to have the most relevant scientific publications that demonstrate that what you're doing with the funder's money is significant and is going to make a difference to our knowledge, to our well-being, and to, yeah, to have a sustainable future. So, Citations. Now let's talk about citations. Um, so obviously impact factor and age index are both talking about citations. So first, in order for people to cite your paper, they need to discover your paper. So discoverability is extremely important. Once they have discovered your paper, they need to actually understand your paper. So a clear scientific message is also very important. You have to remember also the right citations. Citing um, papers from 10 years ago are not going to influence the impact factor. And having your, so when you cite yourself or when you cite your peers, remember it's the last two years that are the most relevant. So discoverability. So they are, of course, the traditional channels. So PubMed, Scopus, um, Web of Science, SciFinder, depending on your field, um, People may have a preference um, on which um, database they prefer to use. But more and more these days, um, it's not just about the paper where your paper is being indexed. It is also about a lot of um, digital platforms. For example, Wikipedia is um, a good place where you could contribute um, to Wikipedia and by and linking to your original article. You can promote your article on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. You can tell your friends. So um, what Wiley has um, is called Wiley Author Services. And this is um, for every journal. For When you publish with us, you are allowed to send up to 10 PDFs to your friends and colleagues, um, which allows them to be able to find your paper. So this is a very handy function that a lot of our authors utilize. And also don't forget, if you have a good website, remember to link to your article. So you can see that this researcher, you can see from this arrow here that this researcher has um, linked to his latest article. And all these things that you do in these um, social media channels and um, digital platforms, what it does is that it improves the Google rankings of your paper. So if someone is looking for a keyword um, in Google or Google Scholar, by having the better ranking on your article, you will ensure that people are able to discover your article faster. So let's go back to the clear scientific message that I talked about. So the title. The title is extremely important because most researchers really don't have very much time. So they want to know exactly what you're doing as soon as they read your title. And if they don't understand or if they don't think it's interesting, they're not going to read further. So tell them already the scientific message of the paper. Um, so 
if you, especially if you're talking about basic research, what you want to say is that this X, Y, Z has an effect on this, and not about the role of something on something, because the role or words like the role, the optimization, improving, um, really doesn't say much about the actual content of your paper. So you want to be as specific as possible. The language, um, I, for me as a scientific editor, I think the most important thing is how clear you are in structuring your thoughts. So you don't need to be able to write a novel in English. Um, this is not about um, English literature. This is about scientific communication. So what works best is actually simple, straightforward sentences, not long sentences with lots of adjectives in between, just very simple, what you did, what's the implications of your what you did. Um, I think that if you think about it that way, that um, write down your ideas first before you actually write the paper would be actually very helpful in terms of structuring very simple and straightforward sentences. It is also about data presentation. So you know the editors and um, reviewers may have limited time. So what they will do is they will look at your title, your abstract, and then look at your figures. So they already make a very quick impression of your paper, whether your paper is worthwhile, more detailed review. So how you present your data is extremely important. Your figures need to be clear. Your figures need to actually make a point. And your figures are not just there to stuff up um, the paper, but actually to tell people what is the scientific message of your paper. And try to think about it this way. If someone doesn't understand your work, they are not going to be able to appreciate your work or cite your work. So think about it or ask someone, a friend maybe, who can help you, who understand who is a scientist, but is not necessarily working in your field to give you the most honest and constructive feedback. Because just because they tell you it's good, it doesn't mean that people will really think it's good. So you need to be, try to get good friends to help you with your papers. And also, think about search engines um, when you write your paper. So there are many um, guidelines available on the internet, and I think some of my peers have already also, my colleagues have talked about um, how to um, improve the search engine discovery of your paper, and it's also available on our Wiley Author Services. Um, so tips such as having the keywords at the beginning of the sentence, having the keywords in the abstract, all this will help um, improve the search engine discoverability of your paper. And um, so coming back to the clear scientific message, and I wanted to just um, use an example from us um, as um, in-house editorial office um, editors on what we do to help you improve your paper. So when we, after we accept your paper, we make title suggestions to improve your title because we are aware what are the requirements, um, what the readers are looking for, what digital platforms are looking for, and we will make suggestions to make your paper as sexy as possible. We will also add your language, especially in your abstract. We will try to convey your message, we will understand your paper and convey it in such a way that um, your peers will be able to appreciate it quickly. Data presentation, so I mentioned, is extremely important. If for some reason you manage to get through peer review and um, the authors, um, the reviewers have recommended accept, but we are aware that perhaps readers will not be able to fully comprehend um, what you have written, we will check that your figures and tables are actually um, of the standard expected of a scientific article. So a very common mistake is that a lot of times people um, provide three figure panels, but they never mention why one particular figure is never discussed um, 
in the results section. So that, of course, provides confusion to the readers and um, really diminishes the impression of your paper. And also, again, we try to convey the importance of your work to a general reader. So we have several platforms, um, such as um, our magazine sections, um, our interstitial sections, where we summarize your work in a quick and simple way for people to appreciate it and therefore be able to be interested in your detailed scientific research. And like I've said, we um, are constantly looking at what are the requirements of search engines and um, how your paper, we are adapting your paper so that it can be met the requirements of the latest digital technologies. Okay, so I've talked about how to write a paper, um, how to present yourself clearly, and now is how do you ensure um, that you get the maximum number of citations? And of course, we all know, cite yourself. What I'm trying to say here is, don't, not that you cite every single paper you've ever written, but only cite the relevant articles that are relevant to this current paper that you're working on. Um, it seems really obvious, but um, so often we have seen papers and then we realize, wait a second, this author forgot to cite his own paper. It just seems kind of, um, Maybe you have so many papers that you forgot which ones are the most relevant ones, but for us, you know, we just do a quick search and then we find these and then we go, we will kindly remind you that you need to cite your articles. And of course, you need to remember what are the relevant time period to cite these papers. And um, another thing is, of course, the journal impact factor is built on citations. So it is actually in your best interest, again, that when you cite papers, you also cite papers that are within the journals that you have published in, and therefore you can co contribute to maintaining the impact factor of the journal that you have published in. Of course, keeping in mind that you need to cite the relevant articles, not just any article, but scientifically relevant because this will build onto your reputation that you are actually aware of the field and that you're not just trying to um, gain the impact factor. Again, remember this equation. Um, it is about um, the right citations in the right time period. And um, I just want to emphasize talking about citations in factor, it really is about scientific research. It is about important scientific research. But there are several points that you need to ensure long-term scientific success. So first, choosing the right publishers is a good way to go about it because by having the right publisher, what you will ensure is that the longevity of the journal that you're publishing in and that it has reputable practices and it has a good um, reputation within the community. It is also important um, to choose the right journals um, because, of course, the right journals having the right impact factor, the right scope, um, the right community um, to publish your work. It's also important to know the definition of success because today your impact factor may be the most important thing, but tomorrow, who knows how your funders might change. So you need to always keep track of how the funders are required, what is expected of you. Don't be afraid to market yourself. Um, tell everybody what good work you have done. And also choose the right collaboration partners because um, the right collaboration partners will ensure that you um, are working on scientifically relevant research. And finally, I also want to emphasize again that research is about collaboration. Research is about building relevant um, work for future generations. So, you know, impact factor and everything is very important, yes, to get your funding. But at the end of the day, if you have good research, if you have good research that is also um, well marketed and well promoted, you will ensure long-term success for yourself and also for the research community. 
So um, for those of you who are really excited about this topic and you would like to more, learn more about it, I would like to refer you to um, Wiley Author Services where we provide a lot of guidelines for our authors um, on how to improve your paper, how to write your paper, how to ensure that your paper is discovered. And um, another very useful resource, um, and this one is actually in Chinese, so it's www.wileychina.com and where we provide a lot of information for authors. Another thing that you may be interested in is a biotech magazine called Biotech Visions. It is a free biotech magazine. It covers article highlights, industry news, getting published, and biotech careers. So getting published in biotech careers are topics that will help you um, get your article published um, Many of the things I've said today, you will find these also in Biotech Visions. Um, Biotech Careers um, may give you helpful tips in terms of um, how you could advance your career. And of course, journal profiles, if you're interested in a particular journal, um, you can find these here. And finally, um, so I represent Biotechnology Journal and Wiley. Please feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Um, of course, I will try to answer your questions now. Um, but if you have any further comments or questions, if you're interested in anything that I can help you with, please contact us. And I also would like to say that we are affiliated. We are the official journal of the Asian Federation of Biotechnology. And um, so if you join the AFOB, um, I'm until the end of the year, I think, you will receive a free complimentary access to Biotechnology Journal, um, in addition to many other benefits. So um, here's my presentation for today. Thank you for listening. I'm going to turn back to Licia and um, start looking at the questions that you have um, given me and um, start answering them. <laughs>